What do you know about temperature control in horses? Researchers have found that rugging, coat clipping and shoeing have negative effects on the horse's natural thermoregulation mechanisms. So does that mean that shod hooves are colder than unshod ones? Can rugging a horse affect how they control their own body temperature? Is clipping a horse because he's sweaty truly necessary or just a vanity exercise? Horses have been around for more than 50 million years, so surely they would have got it right by now without the added extra help from humans, wouldn't they? Keeping horses nowadays has changed quite a bit from a few decades ago. Now it is commonplace to shoe horses back to back, 365, instead of giving horses a rest out of shoes for a season, something the old farriers would always tell you would be the way to keep your horse's hooves healthier. Horses are now frequently kept in large livery yards, often on ex-cattle or dairy farms on grass far too rich for them, being fed haylage full of high sugar grasses such as rye, or being fed out of a myriad of bagged feeds that are just inappropriate for their species. And because of all of this, horses are more overweight than they've ever been before and they are sicker than they've ever been before so there must be a good reason nowadays there's a whole new fashion surrounding horses with owners waiting for this season's latest rug colors to appear in their local agricultural store and some horses having several rugs for several reasons and seasons rugs to keep them warm in the winter and rugs to keep the flies away in the summer and then there is the clipping it has become such a thing to do now that whether a horse is in hard training or not they are clipped almost definitely because of a fashion trend and what their friends are doing with the excuse that it's actually better for the horse when in fact most often it actually is quite the opposite so have we all gone mad or is rugging, clipping and shoeing not really a problem for horses at all? And can humans really have any effect on how horses keep warm or cool down? I think what we need right now is some research and some real data. Hello, I'm Lindsay Setchell and welcome to my new YouTube channel. We're getting lots of positive responses from people who are enjoying the content, thank you. And if you enjoy my channel, please do like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And in case you haven't met me yet, I'm the editor of the Barefoot Horse magazine. I'm a founder of uh, the trimming organization Hoofing Marvelous and I'm also a presenter on Barefoot Live TV. And me and my team are currently touring the UK and Ireland presenting our three-day horse and hoof care workshops. If you've not seen any of my videos before, our mission on this new YouTube channel is to rid the world of unnecessary lameness. To get our horses sound and healthy and keeping horse owners informed with solid evidence-based science, transition stories, education and information to help you go successfully barefoot with your horse. I would love for you to join me on this journey to make the equine world a far better place for our domestic horses. Are you with me? Then let's get into it. <laughs> Researchers from Norway found that shod hooves, particularly hind hooves, had a significantly lower temperature than unshod, bare hooves. The research showed that metal shoes not only caused cold feet, but that they can also drain horses of body heat through their hooves. Now, this shouldn't be that surprising to some of you if you remember learning about metals in school. Metals are really good at conducting heat, electricity and becoming really, really cold. There is a reason that metal shovels out in the cold and cooking pans subjected to heat have wooden or plastic composite handles to stop our hands from hurting whilst we're using them but no such luck for horses with metal shoes walking around on very cold ground, zapping the heat from their feet and legs, or going at speed causing friction and therefore heat being transferred through the shoes 
to their hooves. But is this an old wives tale or does it really truly happen? The researchers in Norway wanted to assess the horse's susceptibility to cold and heat loss. They wanted to understand if modern day practices such as rugging, coat clipping and shoeing had any effect on the horse's natural thermoregulation mechanisms. And the answer folks was a resounding yes. Greta Jorgensen, PhD of the Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy Research in Norway, said, the common management of clipping, blanketing and stabling is perhaps not the best we can do to help our horses maintain thermal comfort, but it's what everybody else does. It is what the professional riders do and it is what we humans would do when we feel cold. I mean, when we are cold, we put extra layers on, right? But the hair on our bodies doesn't even come close to the coat on a horse, an animal that was designed to live outside. Greta added, I think the general knowledge about thermoregulation in horses is somewhat lacking. The researchers studied 21 horses of mixed breeds and ages and body conditions using infrared thermography and found that in particular the chest, shoulder, neck areas as well as the rump showed the highest thermographic readings. These areas were where horses lost most of their body heat and these are often the areas that can be affected by wearing rugs resulting in loss of hair in these clearly vital areas due to chaffing and rubbing the hair away. Even worse, it's also complicated by clipping trends. Greta said, the body parts most prone to losing heat in the cold are the ones that get sweaty first during exercise, the neck and shoulders. Heat loss is a mechanism of utmost importance to horses as they are prone to heat stress. So many owners clip their horses' necks and shoulders to avoid heat stress during exercise. This is a very difficult situation for the horse because a clipped horse then needs to be covered with a rug. And to that, Greta said, the horse cannot regulate temperature on one body part separately. If it becomes too warm on the back, it will feel warm even if the neck is clipped. More on the Norwegian research and shod feet later on in this video, but let's delve a little bit deeper into the subject of rugging. We published an article in issue 28 by Ross Cooper from Rosker Horsemanship discussing whether rugging was indeed a welfare issue. Ross said, a horse has an internal body temperature at 38 degrees C, one degree above humans. The TNZ thermo neutral zone for the unclipped horse is between five degrees to 25 degrees C. This is the temperature range in which the horse can maintain and regulate body temperature with minimal or no energy expenditure. Should the external temperature drop or rise above these figures, the horse will then expend energy to regulate appropriately. Shivering, increased foraging, random bursts of movement and a slower breathing rate with temperature drops in contrast to sweating and labored breathing when overheating. These are just some of the ways that horses regulate their internal temperature. Ross went on to say that horses can adapt to a change in temperature with gradual adaptive changes such as coat shedding in the spring and summer or growing in length and density in the autumn and winter, plus other adaptive changes such as increasing or decreasing their food intake as the environment changes in temperature. Ross said certain breeds are designed to be able to withstand colder temperatures. The heavier native breeds with shorter limbs and thicker coats in comparison to horses from a warmer environment with finer coats and longer limbs. Though regardless of breed, the thermo neutral zone is the same in each breed. Horses are more efficient at raising their body temperature when they are cold than they are at lowering it when they're hot. And horses who are rugged in mild weather when the owner feels a little cold in the morning before they go to work is potentially subjected to overheating during the day until the owner returns to put the horse away into the stable and take the rug off at night. Oftentimes, 
changing that rug with a warmer stable blanket because now, of course, the horse isn't moving about and is likely to get cold. It really shouldn't come as a surprise to learn that humans are really not at all like horses. <laughs> we have a much narrower thermoneutral zone of approximately 23 to 28 degrees C and anything below that and we begin to expend our own energy to keep warm. So therefore we layer up and anything above 28 degrees C and we begin to sweat and we start to remove items to cool down. We hate being hot, which is why we're able to remove clothing, but no such look for the horse that's fully rugged up. And Ross said, poor management and peer pressure in equine management interferes with the horse's ability to maintain a comfortable temperature by projecting human feelings onto the horse, resulting in many horses suffering. The world is now experiencing warmer temperatures due to the effects of a changing climate. He went on to say, I regularly come across healthy horses in full neck, medium weight rugs, some even double rugged, day in, day out on good grazing, available shelter and of ample weight. And his take home message is that if you are cold, it doesn't signify that your horse is going to be cold and that yet again, we need to be far more species specific and manage our own horses to their individual physiological standards, not our own. Natural hoof care practitioner Nick Hill also tackled this emotive subject of rugging and whether it was a necessity way back in issue six. Nick appreciates that it can be difficult to buck the trend, particularly if you are in a yard where rugging is the norm. And he talks about wet, hot, cold and windy weather not really being that harmful to horses, especially if the horse can get shelter either man-made or behind hedges and walls. And Nick says, it comes down to common sense. And remember, just because you've taken the decision to rug, it doesn't mean that the rug cannot be left off for a day if the weather is good. Even in snow, if the sun is out, the horses can still enjoy a good roll in the snow without a rug. I always say, me, unless your horse is old or sick, then there should be no reason to rug, and especially if your horse is overweight. So please keep those rugs off if they're overweight and not old or sick. And as an aside, on our front cover of issue 33 is Daisy, who lives in North Dakota. And she lives in an area that regularly falls between minus 30 Fahrenheit. And this picture was actually taken on a frosty morning at min minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit, blanket free, totally blanket free. Now, as I promised, let's get back to those researchers in Norway and what they found out about the hooves. This study by Greta and her colleagues is believed to be the first ever study of heat loss associated with metal shoes ever done in the world. The researchers found that horses tended to have colder feet, especially the hind feet for some reason, when they were wearing metal shoes compared to when they were barefoot. The researchers confirmed what Greta had long suspected. I have always thought that shod hooves felt colder when handling them and I have seen barefoot hooves leave a melting mark in the snow. As mentioned earlier in the video, metal is a good conductor and so outdoors in temperatures well below the freezing point, heat loss by conduction via shod hooves could be actually a major issue for horses and it's not ever thought about. And if metal shoes being excellent conductors can cause heat loss, what about excessive heat gain from that friction on roads? Have you ever seen those sparks fly when horses turn or stop suddenly on roads when they're shod? So yet another nail in the coffin, pardon the pun, for metal shoes. How unpleasant having unnaturally cold feet. You can read Ross's article about how over rugging your horse without respecting their natural thermo neutral zone and how it could turn out to be a welfare problem in back issue 28. Nick Hill's article in back issue six and Greta's article detailing all their research in warm hearts and cold feet in issue 30. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please show us your support by subscribing so we can carry on making videos all about keeping horses as naturally as possible. 
Rugging and clipping is a very emotive subject, but once you start to look deeper at the science of how the horse's coat works and how it is so well adapted to such a big range of temperatures, then perhaps it will make you think twice about putting that rug on next time you feel a bit cold yourself. And I plan on doing another video on how that amazing massive organ that, that covers the horse's body, the skin and the hair, and how all that helps to keep a horse warm or cold. And I'm gonna do that in another video. Please do go and get those articles. The best way to do that is go and get a subscription to the mag. And as always, if you need more advice, then talk to me and my team so that we can help you. And the way to contact me is in the description below. Don't forget there are always loads of different ways that you can find out more information. Of course, you can read the Barefoot Horse magazine. We're just about to uh, release issue 34. That's coming very soon, folks. And you can join our Barefoot Live private members group where you'll get access to experts, hoof care consultants like me, and watch live shows all about horses every single week. And we do still have some places left on uh, a few of our workshops in the UK and Ireland, but they are filling up fast this year. So do go to the MAG website and find out if we are in a place near you. And for everyone else not in the UK or who can't make it to a workshop, then coming soon, we will be launching our online training. If you know of someone who'd benefit from watching this video, then please do share on your other social media channels and uh, take that still of me and share that on your stories and tag me in it because I will see it and I'll repost it. Join my email list and get a video community message from me every single week to all our email subscribers. And do check out my other videos on this channel. At the time this video went live, we've already had over 175 hours of watch time with people tuning in to watch these videos on my channel has only been live two weeks yes remember the reasons i set up this youtube channel and that was because i need you to help me rid the world of unnecessary lameness and we can do this all together folks so please please subscribe to my channel show us your support and in my next video i'll be talking about whether horses can jump in hoof boots and are boots a great accessory to own in your tag all in my next video. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video, folks. It really does mean a lot to me and I hope this channel helps to bring the barefoot success you so deserve to find with your horse. I can't wait to hear how this video helped you because that's why we're here, isn't it? So thanks so much and see you again in the next video. Bye-bye, barefooters, and bye-bye everyone that wants to be barefoot. Bye-bye.